Good morning. Pesach Shalom. Passover today. <laughs> um, it is the 28th. Also, this is my wife's birthday. 63 years of age. Mm. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You know, Passover is a holiday, holy day, excuse me, that was specifically given on to the Jewish people. And I do have a video addressing um, Passover, Christ is our Passover, an older video, um, which I, if I can remember, I will put it in the description box of this video. Not going to get into that. But um, Passover in this dispensation is not a requirement onto the Jew to be saved or to stay saved, okay? Passover is a remembrance unto the Jewish people, as is the Lord's Supper to the Jew first and also to the Greek, okay? But when it comes to Passover for our instruction and in righteousness, it is, um, ought to be for us of the Church of the Living God a time of reflection in many ways. Like I said, very similar on to the Lord's Supper. Very similar. Very similar. And I do believe that uh, if you are a Jew, that you ought to observe Passover. But it is not a requirement for you, for your salvation, or to stay saved. Okay? It is not. It is not. But it is something, if you are Jewish, I believe that you ought to do. Okay? Absolutely. Absolutely. But with that said, this video is for our instruction in righteousness for the church of the living God, okay? All things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope, okay? So this video is going to be for our instruction in righteousness. We are going to be looking at an aspect today that has to do with Passover. And that aspect is that today we are going to be going through the scriptures in the book of Exodus uh, primarily and we are going to be examining Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Okay? Now, before we, we begin, turn in the authorized version of the scriptures to Leviticus chapter 11. Okay, You need the authorized version of the scriptures, commonly referred to as the King James Version. Uh, um, you need your scriptures for this. We're going to be going through quite a few scriptures today. Okay? And you are expected to follow along. Alright? Okay? Leviticus chapter 11. Remember, this video is for our instruction in righteousness which we, the Church of the Living God, the ground and pillar of truth, we need a whole lot of today. Leviticus chapter 11, verses 45 on to verse 47. Leviticus chapter 11, verses 45 on to verse 47. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Holy, separate than, other than. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? That's our reasonable service today. Okay? This is the law of the beasts, and of the fowl, and of every living creature that moveth in the waters, and of every creature that creepeth upon the earth. Why? To make a difference between the unclean and the clean, and between the beasts that may be eaten and the beasts that may not be eaten. Okay? For us, today, we have been called out of Egypt. Egypt is a type of the world from under the headship of Pharaoh, Satan, 
okay? Now, while this is clearly written in, um, uh, as far as dispensationally and doctrinally, is written specifically for the Jewish people under the law, obviously, okay? But to instruct us in righteousness, we have been taken out from this world. We have been grafted into the tree of the Jew, because salvation is of the Jews, dear friend, okay? But we have been grafted in, okay? Since we have been taken out, we ought to be holy, separate, other than what you see going on out there, okay? Separation, being a separatist, different, okay? Why are we doing that? Verse 47, to make a difference between the unclean and the clean. What is good, what is right, in accordance with the scriptures, to be witnesses unto the lost. Okay? So, for our instruction in righteousness today, and obviously, yes, we have been called out of the world from under the headship of Satan to be witnesses unto the world, unto the lost. To put a difference between the unclean and the clean. Okay? All right? But see, there are those out there who want to sometimes draw back onto this world. And then there are those out there who profess in name only, but have nothing to do with Christ. They are infiltrators, fakes, and not saved. But then there are those who are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, who want to fall back onto the world, being carnal, carnal, carne, fleshly, okay? And within the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, we see a warning. Go to Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 5. Hmm. One of the seven times in the book of Isaiah where the very first word of a chapter of a verse, in the opening verse, verse 1, very first word, this happened seven times, where woe is the very first word in the beginning of a chapter, in, cha in verse 1. That happened seven times in the book of Isaiah. This is one of them, okay? Isaiah chapter 30, verses 1 under verse 5. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, <laughs> and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. For the princes, for his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Hanes. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be in help, nor profit. Wait, wait let, let me read that again. <laughs> they were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be in help, nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. And one verse in uh, Isaiah uh, 36 Verse 6, Isaiah 36, verse 6, one verse. Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt, whereon if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt, 
to all that trust in him. Now roll that around your head. Okay? Again, for our instruction in righteousness, in type. Egypt is the world, in type. In type, Pharaoh is Satan, in type. And those who are not of the church of the living God, but those who are of the church of the living God and have no root in themselves and get a skirt at what's going on and seek to take counsel, but not of the Lord, but seek to get a covering, but not of his spirit that go back to Egypt, the world. Okay? Verse 6 again in Isaiah 36. Lo, for those of you who are carnal, there is such a thing of the church of the living God. And you lost infiltrating despicable devils. Again, a reminder unto you. Lo, thou trustest in the staff of this broken reed on Egypt, the world. Whereon if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to all that trust in him. Okay? Now go to Isaiah chapter 31, verses 1 under verse 3. Isaiah 31, verses 1 under verse 3. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. And now, as we're reading this, put into your brain case all the stuff that's happening right now. Okay? Especially here in my nation, with the stimuli checks being given out, with the... Uh... Okay? Keep this all in mind. And also keep in mind the hirelings in the buildings, the fakes online, and even out there, the j who sent us stuff in the mail recently. <laughs> Let's continue. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many. Think about the Catholics. If Jesus was going to build a church, it would be the biggest one. <laughs> yeah, you're a son of perdition, you mean, don't you? Yeah, well, let's continue. And then horsemen, because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. Yet he is also wise and will bring evil and will not call back his words, but will arise against the house of the evildoers and against the help of them that work iniquity. Verse 3. Now the Egyptians are men and not God. And their horses, flesh, and not spirit. I leave it to you to make, to put the things together, to uh, cross the I's and dot the T's. <laughs> I leave that to you. Do the spirit. You know, the Lord will show you these things. Okay. Now the Egyptians are men and not God and their horses flesh and not spirit. When the Lord shall stretch out his hand, both he that helpeth shall fall and he that is hoping shall fall down. And they all shall fail together. Thus, once again, the ultimate end and fate of the fake. Thus, also, the end of the lost. And also, too, to be of grave consideration to those of the Church of the Living God who uh, look to Egypt for help. 
who decide to take the covering of their stuff from Egypt rather than of the Lord. This is a warning. Woe be unto you. But now, go to Exodus chapter 3. Pharaoh. We're going to be looking at Pharaoh here. Quite in, This is not going to be, if you will believe this, this is not going to be as in-depth as it could be. Okay? We're going to be basically skimming along and looking at reference points here and there. Okay? Okay? So, Exodus chapter 3. We are going to be reading this whole chapter. Okay? But we're going to make some stops along the way as we go towards the end of the chapter. Alright? So, Exodus chapter 3. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out to the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why? The bush is not burnt. Moses said, I will now turn aside to see. And when he turns aside to see, not just to look at, oh, that's pretty interesting. But see, at turning aside to look, it was because why the bush is not burnt. Rather than just looking at it, oh wow, this this just started bursting in flame for no apparent reason. Pretty interesting. And then go on. No, he turned aside, but to also see why the bush is not burnt. And look at verse 4 now. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. When God saw that Moses turned aside to see, okay, this is also has a lot to do with Israel in the last days during the time of Jacob's trouble, when they will finally turn aside to see. Not just to see the sight of devastation, not just to see the bush burning, but the more rather, why the bush is not burnt. Okay? We can go on 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 and on on that alone, but we have a different um, we have a different thing that we're looking at today. So let's continue, okay? And he said, "Draw not nigh hither; put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground." This happens again in the book of Judges when Joshua, the um, the general or whatever of the Lord's armies, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay, was there, okay. And he told them to take off the shoes of your feet. Happens twice. Let's continue. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And the Lord said, I have seen, surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. He is a man acquainted with uh, sorrow. Uh, he is a man of sorrows and acquaint, acquainted with grief. I'll get it out. Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. Uh, read that periodically when you have the chance. Okay? Verse 8. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto the place of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, 
And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Remember, for our instruction in righteousness, the type, okay? Remember that. Doctrinally, dispensationally, this is clearly for the Jewish people. But remember, for our instruction in righteousness, keep that in mind, okay? <clears throat> Let's read verse 9 again. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come on to me. And I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou might, mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Meekness, humility. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. See, the assuredness, the guarantee, okay, that if the Lord is sending you to do something for his glory, his word will not return unto him void. It's going to accomplish that he puts it out there to do. Hence, again, if you're doing something that you know the Lord has called you to do, rest in that confidence and go with abandonment in that calling, knowing that it was he, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who sent you. And you verify that through his word, the scriptures, not your feelings. Okay? Let's continue. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh, okay? He took the name I am upon his lips, calling himself the Father in the book of John. That's why the Jewish people wanted to stone him, okay? Let's continue. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together, and say unto them, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appeared unto me, saying, I have surely visited you, and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, unto a land flowing with milk and honey. And they shall hearken unto thy, and they shall hearken to thy voice, and thou shalt come, thou and the elders of Israel, unto the king of Egypt. And ye shall say unto him, The Lord God of the Hebrews hath met with us. And now let us go, we beseech thee, three days' journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to the Lord our God. Now the three days thing is very significant because of the three days that our Lord Jesus Christ was in the tomb, you know, the three days when he was there also went into the heart of the earth, okay? That is significant for that very reason. But before we continue, okay, we have to remember the Pharaoh unto whom Moses was sent was not the same Pharaoh in where Moses went and done slew the Egyptian and hit him in the sand, okay? 
that Pharaoh done died. This is the uh, son or whatever of the previous Pharaoh, not the same Pharaoh that was heretofore, okay? Wasn't the same one. This is a different Pharaoh, okay? Got to keep that in mind. Many secular sources have made a big to-do about that, about the relationship of, of that there might have been one between this Pharaoh and Moses, and there's... Um, they kind of wondered whether or not Pharaoh could have been, or excuse me, that Moses could have been at one time consideration to be a Pharaoh. That's neither here nor there. But the thing to remember that this is not the same Pharaoh that was there when Moses done killed the Egyptian. Okay, you can verify that. Okay, you can verify that here in... Uh, 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 chapter 2, uh, also here in chapter 3, and continuing, okay? It's not the same uh, Pharaoh. But let's continue. Verse 19. And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. But every woman shall borrow of her neighbor and of her that sojourneth in her house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and ye shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters, and ye shall spoil the Egyptians. Okay? Now you got to remember. Look at verse 20. And I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. Okay? Okay? Signs and wonders, for the Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22, I believe that is. The Jews require a sign. Okay? But, verse 19 again, And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, no, not by a mighty hand. He was sure. He was sure. Note that this is mentioned first before the Lord mentions anything about hardening Pharaoh's heart. This is mentioned first before it says that the Lord hardened his heart. Why was that? Go to Job chapter 41. Aha! Yes. Job chapter 41. We're going to be hitting Job 41 a few times here today. We're not going to be going through the entire chapter of Job 41, but we're going to be addressing some things. Job 41, verses 9 and 10. Job 41, verses 9 and 10. And hello, Job 41, Leviathan. Job 41 is about Satan. Okay? Job 41 is clearly about Satan. Job 41, verses 9 and 10. Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Get a load of that. Shall not, shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? None is so fierce that dare stir him up. Who then is able to stand before me? Verse 9, Behold, the hope in him is vain. And when you go back to Exodus chapter 3, okay, go back there. Exodus chapter 3, verse 19, And I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go. No, not with a mighty hand. Job 41, verse 9, Behold, the hope of him is in vain. Shall not one be cast down even at the sight of him? The hope of him is in vain. What does that mean? Especially here in context about Pharaoh? 
Why don't we find out the answer to that in continuing, shall we? Go to uh, Exodus chapter 4, now, verses 21 on to verse 23. And the Lord said, uh, Exodus chapter 4, verses 21 on to verse 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thine hand. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And I say unto thee, Let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse, let, refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy son, even thy firstborn. Now see, now it is mentioned that the Lord will harden his heart. But we see here first in verse 19 in Exodus chapter 3, a clue that Pharaoh's heart is already hardened of itself. You could say he has already made his choice and gone past the point of no return. Do you get it? As with Satan. Because his heart was lifted up in pride. I will be like the Most High. Okay? And all, all the stones, the precious stones were his covering. The anointed cherub. See? See, Pharaoh, this Pharaoh particularly. Okay? This Pharaoh particularly. Hmm. His heart was already hardened. Hence, when our Lord says, and I will harden his heart, his heart was already hardened. But the Lord made sure to it to prove a point, to shew his wonders. I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but I'm going to say it now. To make a, an example of Pharaoh, who in type is Satan. Do you get it? Hmm? Do you get it? And also, now, looking uh, since we have looked at uh, Exodus chapter 4, verses 21 on to verse 23, go back now to uh, Job 41. We will be reading verses 11 on to verse 17. Who hath prevented me that I should repay him? Whatsoever, whatsoever is under the whole heaven is mine. I will not conceal his parts, nor his power, nor his comely proportion. Who can discover the face of his garments, his garment? Or who can come to him with his double bridle? Who can open the doors of his faith, face? His teeth are terrible round about. His scales are his pride. Shut up together as with the clothes seal. One is so near to another that no air can come between them. They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. No air can come between them. Already made his choice, hardened, like so many of these devils. Nothing can get between them. The scales of their pride are so hardened that no matter what you would say, no matter the Lord himself would say unto these devils, it wouldn't make a difference because their heart is already hardened in pride. First by their own selves and then kept along because they have made their choice already. See, You see, and this is the type that you want to be under. Those of you who are lost, the new devils who have given yourself over to this, to your king, Pharaoh, Satan. Good luck to you. Good luck to you. Now, Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. 
Check this out, verse 2. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. I will be like the Most High in stubbornness. Who is the Lord? He is his own God. He thought of himself as God. That's Egypt out there. And the prince of the power of the air. Pharaoh. The little G God of this world. Satan. Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord. Neither will I let Israel go. And think about this. How many are out there that the Lord has used you to be a witness unto some of these lost people and just ain't getting nowhere with them. Why? Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Hardened hearts. Of those who have already made their choice, primarily, but those that are kept in bondage by the little G God of this world, whose hearts are blind, some by their own choice, basically no, all by their own choice. Excuse me. Let's continue. And they said, the God of the Hebrews hath met with us. Let us go, we pray thee. Three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. Now see, the Lord God clearly said, this is what I want you to do. God gave his commandment for the children of Israel, his people. And they go on to Pharaoh. Hey, this is what God has told us to do. Let us go. Okay? Telling uh, Pharaoh the truth of what God has said for them to do. Get it? Now look at this. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works get you on in, onto your burdens? So now, look at that. Instead of dealing directly with what they said, they turned it around and went to the who? The messengers. Instead of dealing with the truth that Moses and Aaron said unto king of Egypt, Pharaoh. What did he do? Instead of taking that truth and doing something with it, no, he turned it around and turned it back onto those who were sent unto him. Oh, gee, doesn't that sound familiar for our instruction in righteousness today? Huh? Huh? The Lord opened up a door of opportunity for you to go witness unto someone? And instead of them wrestling with, wrestling with the truth that you are giving them through the scriptures, what do they do? They turn it around and turn it back and attack you instead. Verse 5, And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick, as heretofore. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And the tale of the bricks, which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them. Ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice unto our God. Oh, they really go. He's really going on on them right now, isn't he? Look at verse 2 again. Look at verse 2. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Go to Ezekiel chapter 28 now. Ezekiel chapter 28. 
We're not going to be looking at what you might be thinking in Ezekiel chapter 28. Okay? Just so you know. Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 20, 28, verses 1 on to verse 10. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Well, this is the prince of Tyrus, not Egypt, not Pharaoh. Shut up. Shut up. Shh. Let's continue, okay? Thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart has lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Okay, who, who does that sound like, people? Egypt, uh, Pharaoh here, what we're looking at. But then again, who else is? does that remind you of? <laughs> Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that, can, that they can hide from thee. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, thou hast gotten thee riches and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. By thy great wisdom and by thy traffic hast thou increased thy riches, and thine heart has lifted up because of thy riches. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, because thou hast set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, therefore, I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness Get a load of that. And they shall defile thy brightness. They shall bring thee down to the pit. And thou shalt die the deaths of them that are slain in the midst of the seas. And later on within the scriptures you see the water, seas, and stuff like that being likened unto people's spirits and body. Okay? Wilt thou yet say before him that slayeth thee, I am God? Ooh. Hmm. But thou shalt be a man, and no God, in the hand of him that slayeth thee. Thou shalt die the deaths of the uncircumcised by the hand of strangers. For I have spoken it. Seth, the Lord God. Oh, oh. Go now to Job 41. Go back to Job 41. <laughs> Come on, fingers, work with me. Work with me. Job 41. Job 41, verses 18 on to verse 21. By his kneesings, his, a light doth shine, and his eyes are like the eyelids of the morning. Out of his mouth goeth burning lamps, and sparks of, fl of fire leap out. Out of his nostrils go a smoke, as out of a seething pot or cauldron. His breath kindleth coals, and a flame goeth out of his mouth. Now, this is obviously talking clearly about a real-life fire-breathing dragon, okay? But thinking about that, out of his mouth kindleth coals. The people in the church buildings, these devils online, out of their mouth, they set things on fire. And remember what we looked at here in Ezekiel 28 already? Okay, remember this? I just uh, shut my page, is there? Uh, uh, what was this? Uh, in verse 7 in Ezekiel chapter 28, Behold, therefore I will bring strangers upon thee, the terrible of the nations, and they shall draw their swords against thee. Again, and they shall draw their swords against the beauty of thy wisdom, and they shall defile thy brightness. Uh, uh, what is that in 2 Corinthians? Hmm? 
2 Corinthians, you know where to go. If you get there before me, go ahead and read it yourself. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. Their works will come to naught. Go back to Exodus chapter 4, okay? So, in examining verse 2, Pharaoh, who is the Lord, that I should obey his voice and let Israel go? I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. What do you think? I think he thought himself as a God himself, don't you think? And, and now let's look at verse 4. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people from their works get you unto your burdens? Turning, instead of dealing with what the truth was given unto them, turning it and turning it back onto the attackers, and then going just berserk on them? Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Verses 10 on to verse 17. Psalm 37, verses 10 on to verse 17. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligence, diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. The wicked plotteth against the just, and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he seeth that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword, and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy, and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. A little that a righteous man hath is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholdeth the righteous. Now, let's continue from verse 8 on in Exodus chapter 4, in Exodus chapter 5, excuse me. And the tale of the bricks which they did make heretofore, ye shall lay upon them, ye shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Let their more work be laid upon the men, that they may labor therein. And let them not regard vain words. And the taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus saith Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go ye, get you straw where ye can find it, yet not aught of your work shall be dis diminished. Now think about this, okay? Again, you as the church of the living God for our instruction in righteousness. The Lord gives you the scriptures and he orchestrates something to use you as his vessel to speak unto a lost person, to witness unto them the truth of the gospel, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. And what do they do? Most of the time, not all the time, not all the time, but most of the time, especially nowadays, what happens? Instead of dealing with that truth, they turn and they attack the messenger. And they go ballistic, hog wild on that messenger. And using every means at their power to do so. Today, here online and outside, you speak up against what's going on right now. The people of Egypt, this world, 
will turn and rend you instead of dealing with the truth because their minds are so engrafted into the teachings of Pharaoh, Satan, the little g-god of this world. And they turn and rend you. They lay upon you this fictitious uh, poison crown, coronavirus. Take away everything from you, but yet you still got to deliver the same tale of bricks. Because they still need their money. That's what this is all about, brethren. This is all about money. This is all about bringing in the one world government, the one world religion, which is going to be headed by the sun perdition. Let's continue. So the people were scattered abroad throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble instead of straw. And the taskmasters hasted them, saying, Fulfill your works, your daily tasks, as when there was straw. Pay your rent, pay your bills as if you, there was nothing going on. No mercy, no grace, no considerations of the truth. But just being attacked, hammered by a system that is eventually going to be to cumulate into the system of the son of perdition. And the officers of the children of Israel, which Pharaoh's taskmasters had set over them, were beaten and demanded, Wherefore have ye not fulfilled your task in making brick both yesterday and today as heretofore? Then the officers of the children of Israel came and cried unto Pharaoh, saying, Wherefore dealest thou thus with thy servants? There is no straw given unto thy servants. And they, and they say to us, Make brick, and behold, thy servants are beaten, but the fault is in thine own people. The fault is in thine own people. But he said, now see, the fault is in thine own people. Again, bringing truth to Pharaoh. Undeniable truth. Bringing undeniable truth to him. And what does he do? Instead of dealing with that truth, what does he do? But he said, ye are idle. Ye are idle. Therefore ye say, let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. Go therefore now and work. For there shall no straw be given you. Yet shall ye deliver the tale of bricks. And the officers of the children of Israel did see that they were in evil case. After it was said, ye shall not minish aught from your bricks of your daily task. It got so bad. So unreasonable. Look at how unreasonable this Pharaoh is acting. Look at how unreasonable these people are out in the world. Especially when you're bringing them truth. They're animals. And what don't animals have? And they met Moses and Aaron who stood in the way as they came from Pharaoh. And they said unto them, The Lord look upon you. And judge, because ye have made our savor to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants, to put a sword in their hand to slay us. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Lord, wherefore hast thou so evil entreated this people? Why is it that thou hast sent me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people. Neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Have you ever been there, brother, sister, huh? You give people out there truth, online here, truth. And what do they do? It seems to get worse. It seems to get worse for you, doesn't it? And you can get to a point it's like, Lord, I, I, I did what you told me to do. I did what you command me to do in the scriptures. My heart was heavy. 
the fire burned in my heart, so I spake. And everything has come down upon me. Why? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in thy name, he hath done evil to this people. Neither hast thou delivered thy people at all. Now we are going to be skipping um, chapter 6. But we got to read verse 1 in Exodus chapter 6. We're going to be skipping chapter 6, but we got to read verse 1. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand shall he let them go, and with a strong hand he shall drive them out of his land. Making the case worse for them, so they are without excuse. Piling upon themselves wrath upon the day of wrath. You know, some of these devils who just keep going about um, mundane, infinitesimal things. They're heaping upon themselves wrath upon wrath for the day of wrath. <laughs> you just keep building up your rewards there, buddy. And these people out here uh, at the church buildings as well. May y'all repent before it is too late. Now, let's look at Exodus chapter 7, verses 1 under verse 7. Exodus chapter 7, verses 1 under verse 7. And the Lord said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a god to Pharaoh. That's a little g. And Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. Now right here, again, he's saying, I will harden Pharaoh's heart. But you got to remember, first, Pharaoh's heart was hardened of his own accord. And the Lord just kept him there if you will, because Pharaoh thought of himself as a god, obviously. Just like someone who? Lucifer, son of the morning, the accuser of the brethren, Satan. Let's continue. Verse 4. But Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that I may lay my hand upon Egypt. And bring forth mine armies and my people, the children of Israel, out to the land of Egypt by great judgments. You can go ahead and tie that into the coming time of Jacob's trouble. And also for our instruction in righteousness today. The redemption of the purchased possession. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth mine hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded them, so did they. And Moses was fourscore years old and Aaron fourscore and three years old when they spake unto Pharaoh. Look at verse 5. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth mine hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. The Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. When the redemption of the purchased possession happens, the catching away, you professed atheists, there is no such thing as an atheist, okay? Okay. You say you don't believe in a God, you lie. You do believe in a God, yourself. Hence, you're just like Pharaoh. You're just like your father, Satan. Okay? 
Don't buy this stupid atheistic garbage. If you're an atheist watching this, you're a liar. You do believe in a God. The one that you look at in the mirror. Okay? That's your God. Yourself. So, get over yourself. All right? But, go to Revelation. See, once the redemption of the purchased possession happens, the catching away before the time of Jacob's trouble, you ain't going to doubt it. Because that's one of the things that Satan, through the son of perdition, is going to play off upon. Okay? He's going to play off of that. There ain't going to be no doubt when the church of the living God disappear in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. There ain't going to be no doubt, see. But go to Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9. Very Something very interesting to note. And also for you of the church of the living God, my brothers and sisters, something we need to keep in mind. Revelation 9, verses 20 and verse 21. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk, Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, pharmakeia, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. And the evidence of God's existence is going to be undeniable during this time of Jacob's trouble. See, you poor poor, deluded atheists. You lost people, you devils, uh, inf infiltrators, you wicked jerks. No pity for you if you make it to this time because you've made your choice. You already know this. But these atheists, there ain't going to be no doubt that there is a God. But even in the sight of of all of the evidence in this time. There are some that are just not going to repent. And also, look at Revelation chapter 16. <coughs> Revelation 16, verses 18 on to verse 21. Revelation 16, verses 18 on to verse 21. And there were voices, what is that? And there were voices, and thunders, and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. The biggest earthquake the earth will ever see. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And who is ba oh, Mystery Babylon? Who is Babylon in this time? Roman Catholicism. The Roman Catholic Church. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone the weight of a talent. And men blaspheme God because of the plague, of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. Back in Exodus chapter uh, 7, verse 5, And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I stretch forth mine hand upon Egypt and bring out the children of Israel from among them. There ain't going to be no doubt during the time of Jacob's trouble. See, you atheistic twits can delude yourself saying, I don't believe in a God. Yes, you do. It's the one that you look at in the mirror. If you survive 
the initial onslaught of the son of perdition going out, conquering and to conquer. If you survive that. You're not going to have any doubt after we, the church of the living God, are redeemed. By that time, once we are caught up, the way to be saved will change. It's going to be faith and works. And people who tell you that it's, going to, it's faith alone during that time are lying to you so that you will take the mark of the beast and be damned to hell. And you have been warned, you have been admonished. But if you want to believe that lie, have fun storming the castle. Do you think it'll work? It'll take a miracle. Bye-bye. Now let's look at verse 13 on to verse 15 in Exodus chapter 7. Okay? Now, very quickly, Aaron, Moses and Aaron, you know, they threw down the rod and it became a serpent. And the magicians did the same thing. But Aaron's rod went and swallowed up their rods, okay? But the magicians were able to imitate the miracles right there, okay? You can read that on your own time, but look at this. Verse 13, on to verse 15. And he hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said, after he had saw that, uh, in verse 12, that Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods, the rods of the magicians. The magicians who copied, imitated the miracles. Okay? Showing us what? That Satan can imitate certain things. Lying, signs, and wonders. Verse 14, And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh's heart is hardened. He refuseth to let the people go. Get thee unto Pharaoh in the morning. Lo, he goeth out unto the water, and thou shalt stand by the river's brink against he come, and the rod which was turned to a serpent shalt thou take in thine hand. And look at verse 22 on to verse 23. Okay? Verses 22 on to verse 23. <clears throat> and this was right after the uh, pouring out of blood and stuff, uh, turning the waters into blood. Okay? So the fish of the river stank. Okay? The, uh, Moses and Aaron, they turned the water into blood through the power of the Lord. The Egyptians did the same thing, imitating those miracles, okay? Verses 22 on to verse 23. And the magicians of Egypt did so with their enchantments. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them, as the Lord had said. And Pharaoh turned and went into his house, neither did he set his heart to this also. Because there was no air that could come in between his scales. Hardened. First of his own accord and kept in that state. Even through various signs. And remember, the magicians were able to imitate the throwing down of the rod and it turning into a serpent and pouring, uh, turning water into blood. Who claims today that they can turn something of a liquidy substance into blood? <laughs> and they can sure look as if they are Christian. Well, Catholics are Christians, of course. Yeah. Now, let's look in Exodus chapter 8. Exodus chapter 8, verses 1 under verse 15. 
And the Lord spake unto Moses, Go on to Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, Let my people go, that they may serve me. And if thou refuse to let them go, behold, I will smite all the borders, all thy borders, with frogs. And the rivers shall bring forth frogs abundantly, which shall go up and come into thine house, and into thy bedchamber, and upon thy bed, and into the house of thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thine ovens, and into thy kneading troughs. And the frogs shall come up both on thee, and upon thy people, and upon all thy servants. Now you have to remember, the plagues of Egypt, every single one of them, was a direct judgment against the gods of Egypt. Okay? I, a direct judgment against the gods of Egypt. Every single one of these plagues, turning the water into blood, the frogs, the lice, the darkness, which is obvious against Ra and whatnot. But every single one of the plagues of Egypt, every single one of them, was a direct judgment against the gods of Egypt, the little G gods. Keep that in mind, okay? Let's continue. And the Lord spake unto Moses, say unto Aaron, Stretch thine hand with thy rod over the streams, over the rivers, and over the ponds, and cause frogs to come up upon the land of Egypt. And Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt. And the frogs came up and covered the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantments, and brought up frogs upon the land of Egypt. Now think about that. Also, there's something within the book of Revelation, out of the mouth of the dragon, spirits were as frogs. Huh? You, you find that on your own time. Okay? You find that on your own time. Okay? But like I said, this is a direct judgment against one of the gods of Egypt. Okay? But the magicians were able to imitate the throwing down of the rods and turning them into a serpent. They were able to imitate the turning of water into blood. And they were also, with their enchantments, they were also able to call up frogs out of the waters and stuff like that. Very interesting. Now look at this. Verse 8. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Entreat the Lord that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people, and I will let the people go that they may do sacrifice unto the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, you guys. All right. All right. Here, my, see my the magicians. Okay. But, that, that, okay, there's got to obviously be a little something to what you're saying, even though my people here can do the same thing. But, okay. Okay. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Glory over me. When shall I entreat, entreat for thee and for thy servants and for thy people to destroy the frogs from thy houses, from thee and thy houses, that they may remain in the river only? And he said, Tomorrow. And he said, Be it according to thy word, that thou mayest know that there is none like unto the Lord our God. And the frogs shall depart from thee and from thy houses and from thy servants and from thy people. They shall remain in the river only. And Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh. And Moses cried unto the Lord because of the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And the frogs died out of the houses, and out of the houses, out of the villages, and out of the fields. And they gathered them together on, upon heaps, and the land stank. Verse 15, but when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, relief, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. Roll this around in your head a little bit. Okay? Pharaoh, seeing all these wonders, yet his own people, are able to imitate them, right? He's like, okay, okay. All right, can you... Okay, yeah, see, they can bring them up, but... Okay, go, go ahead and get rid of this for me. 
and I'll let you go. Sure, sure. Give me a little relief from this. I'll, I'll look to your God so I can get a little relief. For my benefit only. And then the Lord, you know, it's like, hey, the, the frogs died out and they gathered them in heaps and stank, right? But when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, relief, instead of humbling himself, instead of humbling yourself, when you go ahead and try the Lord to see, right? Because that's what you lost people do, don't you? You sit there and you want to make a deal with the Lord, right? <laughs> Good luck with that. And the Lord in his mercy answers you because you're seeking, right? Or the Lord is just merciful in his own, in his own being. And you see this. You have that witness and what do you do? But, the, but when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8, verses 18 on to verse 24. This is the Shimon guy, the sorcerer, who believed, who was baptized, but there was something wrong. What was that? This guy wasn't saved. Oh. Acts chapter 8. Verses 18 on to verse 24. And when Shimon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that on whomsoever I lay hands he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou, thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor nor lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Yeah, the Lord sure does know your heart, and it ain't right. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Shimon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me, that none of these things which ye have spoken come upon me. Now, we don't know what happened after verse 24 on to this Shimon. But history kind of lets us know that this guy became quite a terror unto the church of the living God. But the point is, the point is, that Shimon, the sorcerer guy, he wasn't saved. It was fake. Because his heart wasn't right. He had no lot in that. He had no part of it. Pharaoh. Pharaoh here. Take care of this for me. I'll look to your God to take care of this for me. Lord God takes care of it. And instead of being awed and wondered and broken down, but when Pharaoh saw that there was respite, he hardened his heart and hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. Some of you would like to argue, well, God wouldn't do that for lost people. Hmm. How many lost people or people who, um, lost people that you talk to, about certain things that have happened in their lives and you being of the church of the living God and when you're talking to them you could be, you're sitting there listening to them it's like dude 
what, what, you stupid? You can't realize that that was the Lord's mercy giving you another chance that you might come to repentance? Now, let's look at verse 19 here, okay? Let's look at verse 19. After that, the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod and smite the dust of the land, verse 16 we're reading, that it might become lice throughout the land of Egypt. Okay? Lice throughout the land of Egypt. Of course, they do that. Verses 18 and verse 19. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. Then the magician said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And, Pharaoh heart, and Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had said. Get a load of that. It, went, it got to the point where the magicians could not emulate the miracle of the lice. Okay? They couldn't do it. Showing you and teaching us what? That these devils, these magicians, and so on and so forth, they can only go so far. They can only go so far to reach a point where it will be shown unto someone that it is clearly what? The finger of God. What do you do in that point? When the magicians, the sorcerers, can't do anything for you. When your little feel-good sermons, your motivational speeches can't do anything for you, what do you do? When do you reach a point in your life when you realize this is the finger of God? What do you do? In that moment, what do you do? What did Pharaoh do? Because remember... His heart was hardened first by his own accord, and the Lord kept him there. But what would you do? Then the magicians said unto Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had said. How many chances do you think you're going to get before you run out? How long are you going to tempt the long suffering of the Lord? How many chances do you think you're going to get? Hmm? How much do you think he's going to put up with from you? Thank, uh, praise the Lord, he is not as a man like you or I. Meaning that his long suffering is unfathomable. But what happens to you when you finally reach that point? When you have gone too far with the Lord? But think about that, dear friend. <laughs> Now let's go to verses 25 on to verse 32 in Exodus chapter 8. And this is now after the swarm of flies. Okay? These plagues. All judgments against the gods of Egypt. Okay? This was now after the swarms of flies. Okay? Check this out. And Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go ye, sacrifice to your God in the land. Okay, go, go. <coughs> and Moses said, It is not meet so to do, for we shall sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians to the Lord our God. Lo, shall we sacrifice the abomination of the Egyptians before their eyes, and will they not stone us? 
being called out to be separate, will they not stone us? We will go three days journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to the Lord our God as he shall command us to get out, to be separate than, other than, okay? And Pharaoh said, I'll let you go, that ye may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness. Only you shall not go very far away. Entreat for me. Sure, I'll let you do. I'll let you go. But there's a catch. Still wanting to hang on to him. Still wanting to cling to that one thing. Because you think you're your own God. And you, Church of the Living God. Yeah, th this is all about pride, isn't it? <laughs> I, are we accepting the chastisement of the Lord for our pride? Or are we being like Pharaoh? And in verse 28, he says, Entreat for me. And Moses said, Behold, I go out from thee, and I will entreat the Lord that the swarms of flies may depart from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people tomorrow. But let not Pharaoh deal deceitfully any more in not letting the people go to sacrifice to the Lord. And Moses went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses. And he removed the swarms of flies from Pharaoh. And from his servants and from his people, there remained not one. And Pharaoh's heart, and Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go. Now, you're thinking like, wow, man, wow, wow, right? What more does this guy need, <laughs> right? Think about that. And, and think about this the next time you're out there, brother, sister. We are to be empty vessels to be used for the Lord's purpose and witnessing on to the lost, yes. But the love of many is waxed cold right now and are getting colder and colder and colder as we go. Doesn't mean that we should give up or quit. But we have to keep in mind these things. That's Egypt. And who is in charge of Egypt? Who is allowed to be in charge of Egypt? Pharaoh. And who is Pharaoh? Exodus chapter 9. Look at verse 7. Now this was after what? Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle in the field. Uh, what was this? Verse 3 in uh, Exodus 9. Behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous moraine, like a boil and whatnot. Verse 4. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, that there shall nothing die of all that is the children of, children's of Israel. A difference, a separation between them. One's going to be punished and one is not. Oh, really? Really? Look at verse 7. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead, and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. Even when that clear distinction was made, his heart was still hardened. Now, let's look at verses 11 on to verse 17. And the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, for the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians. 
And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and he hearkened not unto them, as the Lord had spoken unto Moses. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. For now I will stretch out my hand, that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence, and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. Verse 16. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to shew in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Right there's the answer. Why God hardened Pharaoh's heart. His heart at first, before all else, was hardened of his own accord because he thought himself a God. But verse 16, And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to shew thee, for, for to shew in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. As yet exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou wilt not let them go? His heart was first hardened of his own accord, and the Lord kept him there. Why? Why? For to shew in thee my power, to make an example of Pharaoh. Hey, you lost devils, and you, who are not saved. What if the Lord is allowing you in your filth to keep you alive just to make an example of you? Oh, you don't think so, huh? Go to Romans chapter 9. Go to Romans chapter 9. Romans chapter 9. I'll get there. Romans chapter 9. We're going to be reading verses 15 on to verse 24. Romans chapter 9, verses 15 on to verse 24. Romans chapter 9, verses 15 on to verse 44. For he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. There's a good definition of what grace is. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but God that sheweth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might shew my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Uh, Pharaoh, those who have their hearts hardened first and when shown truth, there's no change, there's no wrestling, there's no grappling, but immediately a turn and attack on the messenger. Verse 20. Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall a thing form say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if? What if God, willing to shew his wrath, and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Oh. Oh, think about that one for a minute there, brother, sister. And you devils, 
What if God willing to shew his wrath, you know, stockpiling your wrath that you're going to receive from the Lord upon you in double and triple? What if God willing to shew his wrath and to make his power known endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us, whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. <laughs> you, you, you know, you really got to consider, dear friends, for those of you who are lost and you devils, obviously you devils, you've made your choice, but you got to think about this. What if the God is just letting you go on, letting you go on to shew his power and the fierceness of his wrath upon you at a time appointed? That ought to scare the hell out of you. It ought to. But then again, are you your own God? Now, back in Exodus chapter 9, verses 27, on to verse 35. And Pharaoh sent, and called for Moses and Aaron, and said unto them, I have sinned this time. Okay, this is when the hail came, and the lightning, and smoke, pretty much everything. Okay, this is after that. Okay. And Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron and said unto them, Look at what he says now. I have sinned this time. The Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Remember what we looked at in uh, Revelation? Entreat the Lord, for it is enough, that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail, and I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. Scared him, didn't it? And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, and the thunder shall cease. Neither shall there be any more hail, that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord's. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that ye will not yet fear the Lord God. And the flax and the barley was smitten, for the barley was in the ear, and the flax was bold. But the wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. And Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh, and spread abroad his hands unto the Lord. And the thunders and hail ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more, and hardened his heart, he and his servants. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. Neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord had spoken by Moses. Go to Job. Back to Job 41. Job chapter 41. Job chapter 41. Job chapter 41, verses 22 on to verse 34. In his neck remaineth strength, and sorrow is turned into joy before him. The flakes of his flesh are joined together. They are firm in themselves. They cannot be moved. His heart is as firm as a stone, yea, as hard as a piece of the nether millstone. When he raiseth up himself, the mighty are afraid. By reason of breakings they purify themselves. The sword of him that layeth at him cannot hold, the spear, the dart, nor the habergeon. 
He esteemeth iron as straw, and brass as rotten wood. Note that. Iron and brass which will abide fire. He, he esteemeth them as straw which will be burnt up, and wood also which will be burnt up. Hmm. Interesting, huh? Meaning maybe that the works that they do are temporary and won't last. The arrow cannot make him flee. Sling stones are turned with him into stubble. Uh, into stubble. Doubt, uh, darts, excuse me, are counted as stubble. He laugheth at the shaking of a spear. So firm in, the, in, the, in themselves. Their hearts are hard. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Sharp stones are under him. He, he spreadeth sharp pointed things upon the mire. He maketh the deep to boil like a pot. He maketh the sea like a pot of ointment. He maketh a path to shine after him. One would think the deep to be hoary. Upon earth. There is not his like, who is made without fear. He beholdeth all high things. He is a king over all the children of pride. He is a king over all the children of pride. His heart is so hard like the uh, nether millstone. A hardened heart, first of his own accord, and when given truth, nothing except continuing onslaught. Your goose is cooked, buddy. It's sad. It's sad. It's very sad. Now, Exodus chapter 10, verses 1 and verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart. He hardened his heart. His heart was hardened of his own accord, his own accord first. And he would want nothing to do with the Lord. Nothing. So, that's what you want. I'm going to give it to you. See, you don't want to submit yourself unto the truth, but want to harden your heart. The Lord's going to give you what you want. He is a king over all the children of pride. Lord, have mercy on you. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh. For I have hardened his heart, and the heart of his servants, that I might shew these my signs before him. <coughs> and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son, and of thy son's son, what things I have wrought in Egypt, and my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know how that I am the Lord. All things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Yeah, the Lord was thinking ahead. Praise the Lord that he does that. And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else if thou refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring the locusts into thy coast. And they shall cover the face of the earth, that one cannot be able to see the earth. And they shall eat the residue of that which is escaped, which remaineth unto you from the hail, and shall eat every tree which groweth for you out of the field. And they shall fill thy houses, and the houses of all thy servants, and the houses of all the Egyptians, which neither thy fathers 
nor thy father's fathers have seen since the day that they were upon the earth unto this day. And he turned himself and went out from Pharaoh. Look at verse 7. Look at verse 7. Okay? Look at this. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, Get a load of this. How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. But knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Familiar verses unto you. They ought to be. Come on, fingers, work with me. Come on. Romans chapter 1. Eighteen on the verse twenty-five. Knowest thou not that Egypt is destroyed? How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the people go. Romans 1, 18 on the verse 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shoot it onto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, spirit, soul, and body, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. They knew God, but they didn't know God. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools and corrupted the glory of the un and changed, excuse me, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Isaiah chapter 14. Yes, Isaiah. Now's the time. Isaiah chapter 14. Now we go there. Isaiah chapter 14, verses, you know, 12 on to verse 15. Oh, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Uh, Exodus chapter 10, verse 7. And Pharaoh's servants said unto him, How long shall this man be a snare unto us? Let the men go, that they may serve the Lord their God. Knowest thou not yet that Egypt is destroyed? Look, these, these guys are... Well, get them out of here! And Moses and Aaron were brought again unto Pharaoh. And he said unto them, Go, serve the Lord your God. <laughs> But, <laughs> who are they that shall go? Still clinging. Still clinging. All this stuff has been showed to you. 
and you're still clinging to that one thing, your pride. And for you, the church of the living God, what one thing are you clinging on to? What one sin are you clinging on to that you're just not letting go? See, this works both ways. How long are you going to let your pride be your destruction? And Moses said, We will go with our young and with our old, with our sons and with our daughters, with our flocks and with our herds will we go. For we must hold a feast unto the Lord. There's the truth. And he said unto them, Let the Lord be so with you, as I will let you go. And your little ones, look to it. For evil is before you. Not so. Go now ye that are men, and serve the Lord. For that ye did desire. And they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. It's like, oh, I'll let you go. But who's going to go? Gives them the tail. It's like, not so. Just you, just you men. That's what you wanted. So, yeah. Yeah. In verse 12. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, that they may come up upon the land of Egypt and eat every herb of the land, even all that the hail hath left. Verses 16 on to verse 20. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron in haste, and he said, I have sinned against the Lord your God and against you. Now therefore forgive, I pray thee, my sin, only this once, and entreat the Lord your God that he may take away from me this death only. See, by this time, Pharaoh knew, obviously. Obviously! Look at, look at, the, look at what he was saying here, right? But still see... In his heart, which was hardened of his own accord first. Don't forget that. Okay? It's not this Calvinism stuff. Okay? It's not. Every single person, spirit, soul, and body, is given the opportunity. Every single one. Every single one. But see, you reject the truth of the gospel just one time. Knowing the truth of the gospel, having it presented to you from one of his body, from one of the church of the living God, the ground and pillar of truth, and you reject that. You're a child of wrath. And your king, who is the king of over all the children of pride, is the devil, Satan. Verse 18, And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated the Lord. And the Lord turned a mighty strong west wind, which took away the locusts, and cast them into the Red Sea. There remained not one locust in all the coast of Egypt. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, so that he would not let the children of Israel go. The Lord did it to shew his power on a vessel fitted for destruction. And remembering again, he first hardened his own heart. And the Lord just kept him there to make him an example. To shew his wrath. The Lord's keeping you alive to eventually shew his wrath upon you. So all of us of the church of the living God may see it. And those who are of your own persuasion. God have mercy on you. You people don't get it. Unfortunately. How can ye believe? You seek honor one from another. And don't seek the honor that cometh from God only. And then, the plague of darkness. 
which was, uh, uh, again, a direct judgment against the sun god, Ra. Uh, Baal, the round cookie that is elevated, sun worshippers, a darkness that could be felt. Here, in Exodus chapter 10, verses 24 on to verse 29. And Pharaoh called on Moses and said, Go ye, serve the Lord. <laughs> Only let your flocks and your herds be stayed. Let your little ones also go with you. And Moses said, Thou must give us also sacrifices and burnt offerings, that we may sacrifice unto the Lord our God. Our cattle also shall go with us, there shall not an hoof be left behind. For therefore must we take to serve the Lord our God. And we know not with what we must serve the Lord until we come thither. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he would not let them go. Look at this, look at this, look at this. And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me, take heed to thyself, see my face no more. For in the day that thou seest my face thou shalt die. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well. I will see thy face again no more. Think of the finality of that verse. Think about it. There are those out there, brethren, whose hearts are so hardened they have long gone past that point of no return. There ain't no coming back for them. They have forsaken their own mercies. Those who regard lying vanities forsake their own mercies. That's in the book of Jonah. You go find it, okay? The lying vanities. That they are their own gods. That they're good people. That they just only have to believe without any scriptural repentance. And so on and so on. Look at the finality of that verse. In verse 29. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well. I will see thy face no, again no more. No more chances. Today, anybody can get saved. The Lord can save anyone. He ain't forcing it on you, like what Calvin teaches. And the devil ain't forcing you to stay lost either. No. But see, if you've made your choice after all what has clearly shewed you of the evidence of the existence of God in and of itself and of the truth of the gospel, but you want a God of your own making, Think of the finality of that. Think of the finality of that. That's uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Okay? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. <clears throat> 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 11 on to verse 12. Oh, uh, no. Verse 10 on to verse 12. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they what? They receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. You take for granted the grace of God in this dispensation. And you want to reject the truth. The Lord could still save you. But your heart is so hard and you've gone so far, there ain't no coming back. And you who are lost, 
And Pharaoh said unto him, Get thee from me. Take heed to thyself. See my face no more. For in that day thou seest my face, thou shalt die. I don't want to hear it anymore. I just want to attack you. I'm going to attack you and twist everything. Yeah. And Moses said, Thou hast spoken well. I will see thy face again no more. Think about that, Church of the Living God. And pity. You know, no beast so fierce yet hath some touch of pity. I have none, therefore am no beast. No. I do feel sorry for those whose hearts are hardened and have made such a choice that their inevitable end is hell and a lake of fire. There again, God is just. God is just. Exodus chapter 11. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one plague more upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt, Afterwards he will let you go hence. When he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Speak now in the ears of the people, and let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants, and in the sight of the people. Because they knew. Yeah. Yeah. And Moses said, Thus saith the Lord, About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill, and all the firstborn of beasts, there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, nor shall be like it any more. Remember what Satan said unto the Lord about Job after the Lord, the Lord allowed Satan to go and destroy all of his substance? Skin for skin, yea. All that a man hath will he give for his life. But touch his bones and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And remember, Pharaoh thought of himself God, and his child, his firstborn, is there to be, in essence, touching his own self, his own um, legacy. What does he do? See, it gets personal with Pharaoh now. All this stuff he could, you know, easily. And yes, the Lord was there hardening his heart as well. But remember again, his heart was hardened of his own accord at first. But now it gets personal. Verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Against man or beast. That ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Now hold up. Hold up. Time up. A difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Our instruction in righteousness, Egypt, the world, Israel, those who are of the apple of his eye, for our instruction in righteousness, okay? There is supposed to be a difference between we, the church of the living God, and the lost world. God, <laughs> God is a God of distinction, people. <clears throat> God is a God of distinction. He likes things Separate. We are to be holy, other than, separate than. God is a God of distinction. A lot of you have a lot of problems with that. I get that. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast. 
that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. God is a God of distinction. He likes things different, separate. You're going to have to deal with that and accept it. He likes variety. He likes things separate, not blended together into a whole mush. That works good for soup, sure. But God is a God of distinction. And these Christians today, they are just as the Egyptians, the world. Why do you think I'm so personally big on the distinction of the Church of the Living God between those of being called Christians? A difference. Don't you think that needs to be profound in these last days before the redemption of the purchased possession? Huh? And all these thy servants shall come down unto me and bow down themselves unto me, saying, Get thee out, and all the people that follow thee. And after that, I will go out. And he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. And the Lord said unto Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you, that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh, and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of his land. Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33. Verses 30 on to verse 33. Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 30 on to verse 33. Also thou son of man, the children of, the, of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses, and speak one to another, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. And they come unto thee, as the people cometh, and they sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. For which their mouth, for with their mouth they shew much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not. And when this cometh to pass, <laughs> lo, it will come. Then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Yeah. So many out there have been warned, had been admonished, have heard the truth. Rejected, rejected, rejected. It's only so far that, a Lord, that our Lord is going to strive with man. Before he's like, okay, that's what you want. Go get it, buddy. Go. Help yourself. Knock yourself up. Live it up, buddy. They love to hear your words. They'll take, oh, sure. I'll take that track from you. Oh, I just love, I especially like the King James Version of the Bible. I like, I like the these and thous. <laughs> like, um, can I ask you, do you think it's perfect? Well, I believe that's the best translation there is. Okay. Okay, can here, can I just leave that with you? Okay, thank you. Oh, how late is the hour. How late is the hour. 
Exodus chapter 12, verses 29, on to verse 36. And they got personal with Pharaoh here. Got personal with the death of his firstborn. Exodus chapter 12, verses 29, on to verse 36. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne, unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not an house where there was not one dead. Remember there was a difference set between them? And he called for Moses and Aaron by night and said, Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both you and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as ye have said. Excuse me. Also take your flocks and your herds as ye have said, and be gone. And bless me also. Isn't that something, huh? Yeah. It took all of this. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them, send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, their kneading troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Yeah. 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 But you know what's interesting? You know what's interesting? Okay, after that, after the death of the firstborn and all that, okay, after all that, let them go. Get out of here and bless me also. Okay? Go! Get! What happens? Exodus chapter 14. We're almost done. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they turn and encamp before P. Harioth, between Migdol and the sea, over against Baal-Zephon. Before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will, Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, They are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts. And upon all his host, excuse me, that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. And the heart of Pharaoh and, his, and of his servants was turned against the people. And they said, uh, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 ch uh, chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. Hold your place here. Jeremiah chapter 34. Jeremiah chapter 34. Jeremiah chapter 34. That, that repentance and submission with Pharaoh and his people, the Egyptians, and tight, the world. And Satan, okay, in type for our instruction and in righteousness. But looking at that, it didn't stick, did it? Because what does it say? Verse 5. And it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled, and, his, and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants were turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Remember, the Lord was going to give him a name on the world. 
on the Egyptians and on Pharaoh, Satan. To make an example out of them. They were first hardened of their own accord. And the Lord gave them what they wanted and kept them there. Jeremiah chapter 34, verses 10, on to verse 17. Now, when all the princes and all the people which had entered into the covenant heard that every one should let his manservant and every one his maidservant go free, that none should serve themselves of them any more, then they obeyed and let them go. And you can read about this in the book of Leviticus. Uh, what is it? Chapters, between chapters 25 and 27, I believe it is. Okay? About letting the servants go captives. Uh, uh, I, <laughs> excuse me. Letting the, their servants go free after a set time. Okay? Verse 11. But afterward, they turned and caused the servants and the handmaids whom they had let go free to return and brought them into subjection for servants and, hand, and for handmaids. Now, in context here, this is when King Nebuchadnezzar was about to come and devastate Jerusalem. Okay? Israel was going to go into captivity regardless. But it, the severeness could have been lessened, obviously, if they had just done something right in the eyes of the Lord. And they did. With Nebuchadnezzar ultimately going to come and destroy and level Jerusalem and take Israel captive. With all that in the air, they did something right. But their hearts were after their own covetousness. Verse uh, verse 12. Therefore the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, I made a covenant with your fathers in the day that I brought them forth out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondmen, saying, At the end of seven years let ye go every man his brother, and Hebrew, which hath been sold unto thee. And when he hath served thee six years, thou shalt let him go free from thee. But your fathers hearken not unto me, neither inclined they their, neither inclined their ear. And ye were now turned, and had done right in my sight, in proclaiming liberty every man to his neighbor. And ye had made a covenant before me in the house, which is called by my name. But ye turned and polluted my name, and caused every man his servant, and every man his handmaid, whom ye had set at liberty at their pleasure to return and brought them into subjection to be unto you for servants and for handmaids. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, ye have not hearkened unto me in proclaiming liberty every one to his brother and every man to his neighbor. Behold, I proclaim a liberty for you, saith the Lord, through the sword, through the pestilence, and through the famine, and I will make you to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. They had done right, but reneged on it. What have we done? Yeah. Let's continue. Verse 8. In Exodus chapter 14. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with an high hand, but the Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them in camping by the sea besides Pehereoth and before, before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. And they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, hast thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us, to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? 
for it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness? And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. And the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. Like, quit wasting time. I'm with you. We're doing this. Let's go. Come on. But lift thou up thy rod and stretch out thine hand over the sea and divide it. And the, and the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. Very similar to what is going to happen towards the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. And the angel of God went before the camp of Israel. Removed, and, and the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, excuse me, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea, upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning, in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took off their chariot wheels that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel, for the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand over the sea, that the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord and believed the Lord and his servant, Moses. Galatians. Galatians chapter 2. One of the most profound in all things. Galatians chapter 2. Verses 16 on to verse 21. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, and not by the works of the law.
by, for by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. But if while we seek to be justified be, by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ a minister of sin? God forbid. Remember what we looked at about returning back to Egypt, Church of the Living God? And those who profess big game about being a Christian? For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor? For I through the law am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not frustrate the grace of God, for if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world is crucified unto me, and I unto the world. Go to Zechariah now. Zechariah chapter 14. Then we'll be done. Zechariah chapter 14. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off, shall, be, shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof, toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley, and half of the mountain shall remove toward the north, and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yea, ye shall flee like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark, but it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night, but it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, Tie that in to the book of Revelation. What is it, chapter 21 or 21 between uh, 21 or 22? Half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. And the Lord shall be a king over all the earth in that day. Shall there be one Lord and his name one. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Lord and his name one. All the land shall be turned as a plain from Jeba to Rimon, south of Jerusalem, and it shall be lifted up and inhabited in her place, from Benjamin's gate unto the place of the first gate, unto the corner gate, and from the tower of Hananiel, unto the king's wine press, unto the king's wine presses. And men shall dwell in it. And there shall be no more utter destruction, but Jerusalem shall be safely inhabited. 
And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. And it shall come to pass in that day that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them, and they shall lay hold every one on the hand of his neighbor, and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor. And Judah also shall fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the heathen round about shall be gathered together, gold and silver and apparel and great abundance. And so shall be the plague of the horse, of the mule, of the camel, and of the ass, and of all the beasts that shall be in these tents, as this plague. And it shall come to pass that every one that is left of all the nations which come against which came against Jerusalem, shall even go up from year to year to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feasts, the Feast of Tabernacles. Excuse me. And it shall be that whoso will not come up of all the families of the earth unto Jerusalem to worship the King, the Lord of hosts, even upon them shall be no rain. Has this ever happened yet? No. Future fulfillment after the time of Jacob's trouble, during the thousand-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, from Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven. And if the family of Egypt go not up and come not, that have no rain, there shall be the plague, wherewith the Lord will smite the heathen that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. This shall be the punishment of Egypt, and the punishment of all nations that come not up to keep the Feast of Tabernacles. In that day shall there be upon the bells of the horses holiness unto the Lord. And the pots in the Lord's house shall be like the bowls before the altar. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and see therein. And in that day there shall be no more Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. So, so we have seen about Pharaoh king of Egypt, likened as a type of Satan, whose heart is hard of his own accord, but hardened by the Lord, because at first, at the first, he lifted himself up as if he were a god. And the Egyptians, a type of the world, Have you hardened your heart? Do you not want to hear the truth? But as Pharaoh, king of Egypt, lash out upon those who tell you the truth, who speak the truth, it tells of whom you serve in your behavior. And those of you of the church of the living God are you being as Pharaoh yourself by clinging on to something that you know the Lord hates and after, after testimony, testimony, warning, you persist and still do it? Those who walk in pride, he is able to abase. And I've, I've kept no secret from any of you. I struggle with pride, but you know what? Praise the Lord, he corrects me and rebukes me and chastens me and brings me down. So I'm not lifted up in pride, but I still struggle with pride. And guess what? I have a pride problem. 
But praise the Lord, he is very quick to deal with me in my pride. Through the scriptures, through his body, the church of the living God. He will allow things to come upon you, to humble you, to keep your eyes on him. You could do nothing against me unless it were given you from above. And those of you out there who have hardened your hearts and because evil against, uh, and because judgment against uh, evil work is not speedily done, you keep on going in your trespass. I just paraphrased that from the book of Ecclesiastes, beg your pardon. Yeah, he's letting you go. So you can store up wrath upon wrath upon yourself. May the Lord have mercy upon you. That's going to be it for this video. Um, thank you so much for... Sorry. <laughs> thank you so much for all of you. Um, for your prayers. For your charity. For your mercy. Hopefully this will help some of you. Hopefully, the Lord's will be done. Thank you. We love you. Thank you so much for watching if you do. And we will see you in the next video.